this really is a sweet drink. This is the, I think it's the dragon fruit guava. It's interesting. I've uh, seen this uh, across campus at GSU in the classes and other people walking around with these in the summertime, but so what? I like it. Uh, I would get another one. I feel like I'm in heaven. Um, I also like the uh, s'mores uh, frappuccino. It tastes just like a s'more. It doesn't even taste like coffee. Hello world, I'm Maya Ryan, and I'd like to welcome you to the latest episode of my vlog series. Uh, so far, I've been able to share my own experiences on what it's like to live on the autistic spectrum. The second thing that I will do is give my two cents on autism in the media. The third area entails providing tips and advice for those of you who are on the spectrum, as well as your friends, family members, peers, mentors, educators, employers. And finally, I will cover topics of things that I'm passionate about, in addition to doing day in the life type blogging. So please check me out. I suddenly realized it. First I thought it was guava. No, it's passion fruit. And I've had fresh passion fruit before and it's not pink, it's orange. And I ate it years ago when I had been to Hawaii with my aunt. And so this brings back memories. And this is probably a, a good thing for the June 1st anniversary. Anyway, what I will do now is talk about something that is on my mind since it happened recently. And I would like to talk about uh, something that happened with an ex-friend. And really, she was no friend at all. And so, to give you a little bit of a backstory, we were friends for about eight years from 2005 into 2014. Um, so, yeah, about eight years all together. So it was late, 20, late 2015 until late uh, 2013 and then she pulled the plug on me in 2014 but uh, the relationship was toxic and she decided to cut me out of her life because she couldn't figure out why in the world I got mad at her all the time and she basically blamed me for everything and said that um, my getting mad at her was too negative and it wasn't something she needed in her life. Well, uh, here's the other side of the story. Well, first of all, she uh, had the tendency to push my buttons whenever she felt like it. And she also uh, had the tendency to also uh, be very selfish, extremely self-centered. She was pretentious and arrogant and she was also not supportive and there were times where I had to walk on eggshells around her and just it wasn't a, a real friendship and then she didn't really like me to begin with she was just using me out of loneliness and for her own benefits and so I had been working through that relationship because uh, she could also say some really mean things and I'll talk about it another time. And so recently my aunt had passed away and in uh, January I decided to let her know because Lois touched her life as well and did a lot for her when she was um, going through a rough patch in her own life. And believe me, her behavior that time was not pleasant because I had to walk on eggshells around her. I think I just mentioned that. And so, even though I was uh, trying to move on with my life and I've met other people, I still have my moments where I'm angry with her or whether just I have memories that make me angry. And despite that, I decided to reach out because I felt it was or would be unfair to leave her out of uh, Lois's death and the information on Lois's stroke. And so I told her, but first of all, she ignored me for didn't say anything, didn't respond. And, and so 
after she died, I was very angry with her because I felt like she was ungrateful. So I confronted her about this. Well, uh, almost two weeks ago, I got a letter from her in the mail, uh, which was on a Tuesday. And I opened it up and in the letter, she explained about how sorry she was for treating me the way she did. And she uh, claims that she didn't know how to be a friend to me and she's truly sorry. And she also talked about how uh, she had been a people pleaser all her life and pretended to be somebody that she wasn't. And she said that it wasn't worth it for her to be fake anymore. And that she's learned to like herself and appreciate who she is. But just because she can't be fake doesn't mean she has to uh, stop playing by the unwritten rules of society. And that's what? And then uh, she went on to say she was sorry about my aunt. I mean, she also sent me a sympathy card. And this came about uh, four months after I had, three months, four months, excuse me, after I had uh, told her and she ignored me and I confronted her. And I was actually letting it go. And then she went on to talk about her goals since uh, she didn't have anything before. And then she talked about how she, uh, basically acknowledged that uh, she's happy for me and that I found a, uh, a, a dream job related to my, uh, my education. And then she went on to say that I still don't want to be friends with you because the relationship is toxic, but I am willing to make peace with you. We can be polite to each other in person and I'd like that. I'd like us to be polite with each other with no expectation of us being friends. And I don't want to say it too loud because I'm in a public setting and their kids getting on airplanes, but I'm going to say it over here. Um, and so when I read the end of that, I was pissed off. In my mind, I thought to myself, Buffy. So um, I just, I have gone through a series of emotions. I had finally started to let her go and then I got that letter. Um, and so first of all, that made me mad. And then the other thing that ticks me off is here she wrote me this letter and I tried to write back to her, contact her. She hasn't acknowledged anything I've said and she hasn't wanted to meet. And I asked her to contact me so we could meet to talk about this. But really it's all for the best because again, she said some really mean things to me like about, was it four years ago now? June, uh, June 3rd, 2015, it was a year and a half after we, uh, she called the quits on me or pulled the plug, whatever. Um, she told me that there are people in her life that didn't want us to meet because they don't like me, but they like my other friends. And that's one of the reasons why I was angry with her. And so I'm angry all over again, but uh, maybe it's just not worth it for me to, uh, to get hurt all over again and then be angry for another 10 years. And if, uh, she can't appreciate me for who I am, then she's not worth it. Besides, she, uh, that was a toxic relationship and it wasn't toxic because I got mad at her. It was toxic for this reason. First of all, she was envious of me and she's always been that way. And other reason is that uh, the relationship was one-sided and I didn't realize it. She's also been very selfish and had an agenda of her own. And I'd like to talk about that in another vlog. She's also uh, been very manipulative and she likes to get her way. And when that doesn't happen, she enjoys hurting other people. And there's a story why in the world she decided to hide behind her, uh, her friends and her husband by trying to tell me that they don't like me. And another one is that uh, talks of relationships that I was critical. And she was definitely critical. Like she told me in order to get a boyfriend to grow my hair out and I needed to do all these things. And she was also trying to provoke me to envy all the time. It just, it was a just not a good fit. I mean, yes, I miss her, but it's not worth it for me to get mad all the time. And if she pushes my buttons and she's envious of me and then we're just not compatible, then no, you just, you aren't worth my time. Um, yes, you were a part of my life for a season, but um, 
I have other things in my life, like the airport tours. I've made friends with, uh, with them. I've made friends with a few people at Georgia State. And I'm also learning how to be my own best friend. So anyway, what do you guys think of the letter she wrote? I'd like to hear about it. Uh, I don't think it was a sincere apology, but um, if you like what I'm doing, be sure to uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'm Maya, and I'm signing off. Bye.